Welcome to Native Engineering. This is lesson number four on IC engine, Power Machines N6. And on this lesson, we are doing an exercise. It's an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on August 2019. It's question number one, and it reads as follows. The following results were recorded during a test on a two-cylinder, four-stroke oil engine over a period of one hour. And then we are, give, we are given information in a table form. They say use the data provided above to calculate the following quantities. 1.1, 1 .1, those are the questions. The brake power in kilowatts. Number two, the brake thermal efficiency. Number three, the energy carried away by the fuel gases in kilowatts. Number four, the energy in kilowatts carried away by the combined effect of the jacket cooling water, friction and radiation. Number five, the percentage heat carried away by the combined effect of the cooling water, friction and radiation. Number six, the indicated power in kilowatts. Number 17, the indicated the indicated specific fuel consumption in kilo in kg per kilowatt times hour. And this is the information that we are given. We are given, we are told that the engine that we are working with is a two-cylinder four-stroke engine. And we have the mass of fuel. We are given time as one hour. The mass of fuel is in kgs, but because we are given the, the one hour, we'll say it's kgs per hour because we are told that the period is one hour. We're given the rotational frequency, the heat value, torque brake, mechanical efficiency, and then we are given specific capacity of water. We are given the mass of water. We are given the change in temperature of the water. The, temp the water that we are given, the information of here, it's not the water that is being used in the cooling system. Since they have said mass of water through exhaust gas calorimeter, the water that we are working with here, that we have information of, is the water that develops inside the combustion chamber as, as a byproduct. And some of the heat produced by the fuel will be used to turn this water to steam or just to increase the temperature of that water. Therefore, in the exhaust stroke, as the bent gases inside the chamber are leaving the, piece, the, the cylinder, some of the heat produced by the fuel will escape the, the chamber with the water and we are going to classify that as the heat lost to the the exhaust and we go to question number one 1.1 1 .1. they say the brake power we know brake power it's equals to 2 pi nt which will be 2 pi the rotational frequency we are given in rows per seconds Therefore, in, in revs per second, therefore we do not change it. It's 12. The torque is 88. 88, which will give us 3.36. Sorry. It's 6.635 kilowatts. This was initially in, wa in watts, and I've converted it into kilowatts. 1.2, they say. The brake thermal efficiency, brake thermal efficiency, it's equal to brake power divided by the power produced by the fuel times 100. And the power produced by the fuel, it's equal to the heat value times the mass. Heat value we have as... 38 will convert to will convert it to kilojoules kilojoules per kg times the mass 
of the fuel, which is 2.3. And this will give us an answer of 87400. It's kilojoules, but we know that our mass is in kilojoules per hour. Therefore, this will be in kilo. It's in kgs per hour, and this will be in kilojoules per hour. But we need it in kilowatts, which is kilojoules per second. We are going to divide here by 60 first to bring it to 2 minutes and by another 60 to bring it to seconds. Or you can divide by 3,600, 3, which will give us 24.5. Watts and erase this. Come back to this equation. We have our brake power, we have our heat from the fuel times 100, which will give us our brake thermal efficiency 27.3%. Go to the next question, 1.3. The energy carried away by the fuel gases in kg. Exhaust. Energy to the exhaust is equals to mass times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature, which will be the mass of water. Here it is, 212. 212. Specific heat capacity 4.2. Change in temperature 48. And we will have our answer as 4273.9.2 kilojoules per hour because our mass is in kg per hour. But we are told to calculate the energy carried away by the fuel gases in kilowatts, which is in kilowatts, yes, which we know is kilojoules per second. So we divide here by 3600 so that we are having the kilowatts as our unit, SI unit. And we're going to get our the answer of as 11.872 kilowatts. And we move to question number four, 1.4. The energy in kilowatts carried away by the combi by the combined effect of the jacket cooling water, friction and radiation. First, we have energy produced by the fuel. We have indicated power, which has brake power and frictional power. We have the cooling, we have exhaust, we have remainder. Now, so far, we have calculated this and this. They say we must calculate the energy that the energy carried away by the combined effects of all of the remaining ones except for these ones which is the cooling friction and radiation so we have to combine everything here these two and how we are going to do that is we are going to say the energy from the fuel minus the brake power the sum of the brake power the sum of the energy of the brake power and the exhaust and this is equals to the energy produced by the fuel this is the energy produced by the fuel it's two four 0.278 minus the brake power is 
0.635 plus the exhaust. That's cute. The exhaust, exhaust, exhaust. This is the exhaust. 11.8. Okay. 872. This is true. And we are going to get our answer is 5.771 kilowatts. And the next question, question number five, they say, the percentage heat carried away by the combined effect of the cooling water friction and radiation. Now they want a percentage of this. We are going to say uh, 1.5. The percentage is 5.11. 771 divided by the heat produced by the fuel, which is 24.278 times 100. This will give us 23.8%. 23.8%. And we go to the next question. They say the indicated power. I will erase this. Indicated power is 1.6. We know it's given by P L A C. It's N E. We do not have the information to calculate the mean effective pressure. We are also not given the stroke length, the area. We only have these two. So we cannot use this formula. It falls off. We are going to use the mechanical efficiency as we are given. Break power divided by the indicated power times 100. This is the mechanical efficiency we are given. At 78 times break power, we have calculated it. 6.635 divided by the indicated power times 100, which is the indicated power we got as... 8.506 kilowatts. Kilowatts. And the last question, 1.7. They say the indicated specific fuel consumption in kilo kg per kilowatts hour this indicated specific fuel consumption is the fuel needed for the indicated power the amount of fuel that is needed to produce the indicated power excluding the power that will be lost due to exhaust the power that will be lost to the cooling system and the power that will be lost or will be classified as the remainder we need the effective fuel uh consumption here which is the one that is responsible for the indicated power and they said you must calculate in kg per kilowatt hour and this will be the mass of the fuel which is 2.3 we're not going to convert it since they said per hour times hour and divided by the indicated power 8.506 make sense out of this the SI unit they are looking for is kg per kilowatt hour which says we must have kilowatts times the kg per hour. Even if you do not know what to calculate here, just look at this. 
It says indicated specific fuel is the indicated power first. And it says kgs hour, which will be the fuel consumption because they say indicated specific fuel consumption. So even if you do not know what to calculate here, just make sense out of the few, the SI unit that they gave the, that they, they gave you. So from this, we know this is the SI unit that we are going to get from the information aligned like this. And then we are going to get our answer as 0 0.27 kg per kilowatt hour. Don't leave any question unanswered and say, I, I was not taught uh, such a thing. If they have gave you the SI unit that they are looking for, make sense out of it. And that is basically the end of our lesson. I will see you on the next lesson.